Hey everyone, Rob Greenfield here, and we are at my Urban Food is Free demonstration garden. This is going to be a crash course in how you can grow food for free or with very, very little money. I'm gonna cover all the limiting factors in gardening. So we're gonna go over how to get your garden beds, seeds, water, soil, mulch, compost, everything that you need in order to be able to grow food for free or very, very little money. So first things first is raised beds, containers, what you're gonna grow the food in. And since this is a demonstration garden, I really wanted to show many ways that you can do this in urban environments or out in the countryside. So I'm gonna show you the 10 different gardens that we have. So here we have an old nightstand, and this is just as simple as laying it on its side, filling it with dirt, and then planting food in it. You can use things like bookshelves, drawers, anything like that where you can just lay it on its side and fill it up with dirt. Here we have a uh, old pallet. The bottom is the pallet as the base and then around it it's just using the pieces of the pallets or these are fence posts. 99% of all pallets in the United States are used one time and then end up in the landfill. Pallets are endless. You can get them on Craigslist, behind grocery stores, so many ways to get them. So here's another really simple raised bed. This is just old scrap wood. You could go buy brand new from the store, but the truth is that it's laying all over the place. Here's four uh, five gallon buckets. These are free all over the place. You can go behind grocery stores or restaurants. They get a lot of their food ordered in this, like mayo and pickles and things like that. So you can use these buckets. These are great for balconies and patios and things like that. Here we've got tires. In neighborhoods like where I am in Bankhead, Atlanta, there's tires everywhere. They make a really simple, really easy raised bed and you keep them out of the landfill. And then over here we've got milk crates. Also thrown away like crazy and you can make beautiful little gardens out of those as well. Another wasted resource that you can use is bricks. I got these from an abandoned apartment complex which are just numerous all across the community here. This is my favorite of all. This is just an old toy car of sorts. I don't know if it was a sandbox toy car or what, but anything that can hold in the dirt, you can use it. That's the idea of making stuff for free and keeping it simple. And then we've got some vertical gardening here. This is a great way to use an old ladder. This is just a trash ladder I found in an abandoned apartment complex. And you just take old buckets or whatever containers that you find for free, stack them up, and then you've got yourself a vertical garden. For people that live in urban places, apartments, vertical gardening is a way to really make your space go further. Here, I haven't finished this yet, but this is just an old pallet. Um, how this works is you just have to seal the back, and then you plant, then you fill it with soil, plant it with herbs. Right now I have some herbs sitting on top. Really cool thing here, talk about using your resources, using wasted resources. This is an air conditioning unit. What I did is I positioned the plants underneath it. So these are actually using this water that would have otherwise been completely wasted. And you would be amazed how much water you can get from an air conditioning unit. The key to making raised beds for free are to be creative, use wasted resources, use what is nearby, and try to have the least environmental impact and need as few virgin resources as possible. These are keys to always remember when freestyle gardening and trying to grow food for free. Composting is extremely simple and only as complicated as you make it. A lot of people worry that composting is this difficult thing but the truth is, is the worst thing you can do is not compost. As long as you are sticking your kitchen scraps, your yard waste and so on into this, and if you don't even think you're doing it right at all, that is far better than putting it in the landfill. And making a compost bin is also as simple as creating compost. This is just three pallets nailed together or you can use wire to connect them it's just so that you can keep everything in and keep things like dogs out just add kitchen waste yard waste and paper waste together in a pile you basically want a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio carbon is your browns nitrogen is your greens. so browns would be things like dried leaves or cardboard greens are things like kitchen waste 
or yard waste that's still green. Now, how to get compost for free when you're just getting started. One, you can go to a lot of the city landfills. You can go to Google and, and do a quick search. Find out if your city landfill gives out free compost. This is compost they're making from yard waste that they pick up, sometimes food waste if they have that program. You can also go on Craigslist and just type in compost. You might find mushroom compost or a community garden that just went out of business. Just go on Craigslist, type in compost, see what you find. A lot of times you'll find it for free or for very cheap. You can also just make your own. There's wasted resources all around you to make compost. Again, you just need to find your greens and your browns, your nitrogens and your carbons. You can do this by finding uh, yard waste. You can find huge piles of leaves or grass clippings all over your neighborhood. And to get your nitrogen, what you want to do is find food waste. You can do this in multiple ways. You can go dumpster diving. Grocery stores are a great place to get quality fruits and vegetables that are going to waste that will make great compost. You can also ask your neighbors or local restaurants or businesses to hang on to their food waste and put it into five gallon buckets and then you'll pick it up. Uh, you can talk to coffee shops to get their coffee grounds. So wasted resources are all around you in order to get your compost materials for free. While we're on compost, let's talk about mulch and soil. You can get mulch for free all around you. One way, old leaves. Collect them from your neighborhood. This is a great way to get mulch. Another way is cardboard. The idea of mulch is to do two things, really. One, to keep moisture in. It helps to keep the evaporation from happening and keep the moisture in the soil. Another thing is it decreases your need to weed because it doesn't allow the sun to get through for weeds to be able to grow. As far as soil goes, you can go back to Craigslist and just type in fill dirt or soil. Fill dirt, a lot of the times you can get dirt from construction sites. They might just need to get rid of all of this dirt that they dug up. Another thing is you can see if there's an abandoned garden, abandoned community garden. You can get soil or dirt from that a lot of the times. Or you might be able to just dig some up from an area in your yard as long as you're not messing with uh, the native environment there. Rainwater harvesting is another thing that people think is really complicated, but it's really just as simple as diverting the water from your roof into a container that can hold rainwater. Simple as that. So what I have here, this house, when I got here earlier this month, had no gutters whatsoever. If you have gutters, 90% of the work is already done. I simply put 10 feet of gutter on the roof and then all you need is a downspout that directs into the barrels. All I have is a downspout and then I cut a hole in the top of the barrel and put some mesh wire. This is so that you don't have mosquitoes that are able to get inside there. And then I just put these rocks here in order to make sure that the gutter downspout is going directly into the barrel. And then on the bottom, it's really nice to put a spigot on there, but not necessary. You could always go really simple and just scoop water out of the top. I like the system of having a spigot on here though. It makes it really easy. And then what I do is I just set an old bucket on the bottom of it. To water the garden, I have this bucket, which is just a bucket I found outside that was going to waste. And then I poke holes in the bottom. It makes it really easy to water. By watering your garden with rainwater, we're talking zero pennies, zero money in order to be able to water your garden. Here is another way to, to use water that you wouldn't normally have that would have been wasted. This is a simple five gallon bucket that came from inside the kitchen. You can put this under the sink and unscrew the P-trap and place this under the sink so that the water drains out and then you bring it out every time you fill five gallons. Or you can just place this next to the sink and then dump water in there from the bowls and things like that. So that's called gray water. If you want to get a little bit fancier but still simple, you can do laundry to landscape, which is taking your washing machine and setting it up so that the water comes out into the garden. You can also put a bucket in your shower or you can do the same thing and send your shower water directly out here. Another cool thing you can do is just set up your hose as a shower next to your garden so that the water goes straight into your garden. 
A lot of ways to be able to get water for free and use wasted sources of water. Now when I first got into gardening, I never would have thought that there's a way to get seeds for free. But even seeds can be gotten for free and there's a lot of different ways. Once you've started gardening, all you have to do is save your seeds. Let some of the plants go to seed and then harvest those seeds so you'll have them for your next planting. But if you're just getting started, you won't have that. So what you can do is you can go to gardens in your community. A lot of the times community gardens where they might have neglected plots will have tons of plants that have gone to seed. Ask if you can go there and harvest those seeds. Another thing you can do is talk to your neighbors, talk to people who are gardening and ask if they have seeds that they've saved. A little bit of seeds goes a really long way. Uh, another thing you can do is ask people in the community if they have seeds that are going to waste. So seeds that are older and they might not use. What you're going to want to do if the seeds are older is probably plant them first in little trays so that you can actually test to see if they work before putting them in the soil. You can harvest them from nature as well if you can find wild plants. So a lot of ways to get seeds for free. Lastly, if you are short on cash, if you really want to start gardening but you don't have the money, I can cover the seeds for you. It's one of the things that I do. And to figure out how to do that to get more information, just go to my website, robgreenfield.tv slash free seeds, and you'll be able to get seeds for free. So there's no reason why you won't have seeds between one of those to get your garden going. Another limiting factor can be space. But if you have a creative mind and you're resourceful, the space is all around you. You can use balconies, windowsills, you can use porches and patios, you can use vertical spaces, you can turn lawns into gardens, just grow food, not lawns. You can also use other people's vacant space. So there's uh, people who have their yards that aren't getting used, just grow it in their yards, of course ask them, and then give them a percentage of the food so they are getting food for free. You can also join a community garden or make a community garden if there isn't one. And you can also freestyle garden in abandoned lots or unwanted locations. One really important thing I wanted to say is that food is actually growing for free all around you if you open up your eyes. You can eat the weeds. There's broadleaf plantain, there's dandelion greens, there's lamb's quarter, some of the most nutritious plants are growing all over us in the cities and the countryside and we don't even have to do any of the work. It's just growing there ready to feed our bodies. So get into some wild foraging. I hope that what you've seen here in this video is that gardening doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be challenging. It can be really fun. You can do it with very low to no environmental impact while actually increasing the positive impact you have on the world around you. You can involve your neighbors, involve your community, and grow food to feed yourself, feed your neighbors, and to make the world a better place. If you wanna learn more, uh, more details and figure out exactly how you can do this, you can go to robgreenfield.tv slash food for free. Thanks a lot for joining and uh, grow some food.